On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a go on. A blessed and wonderful Monday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public, and also members of the diaspora. So, please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full and understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica. So watch this now my peeps. One time gone you know, everybody used to look forward to the weekend because the weekend is usually the time when the ones and ones them can relax and unwind after a hard work week. Yeah man, the weekend are the time when the ones and ones them get to go market, wash some clothes, get the youths them together help them with them schoolwork and uh, for those who don't have all of them type of responsibilities there them look forward for partying at the streets but that was one time gone long time now the weekend seems to be the bloodiest time in jamaica the weekend is now the time when most people end up lose them three pints courtesy of the old dirty kind of boy them out there yeah man so over there in the parish of clarendon clarendon definitely start get warm since the other day even though the place is chilly clarendon definitely i get warm so watch the snow as the police was on a knockings and clapping scene that took the life of a man over there in rules pen in maypen clarendon saturday night the criminal elements them start beat bacon from the adjoining community of Palmer's Cross which alerted the police to a second fatal knockings and clappings. Now we could talk about the knockings and clappings over rules pen. Now that incident involve this man presently on your screen, 31 year old farmer Joel Bartley. His life was taken in a hail of bullets by criminal elements as he was looking after some soup at the side of his little corner shop. The official police report in his fatal knockings and clappings suggests that a man who was armed with a long gun entered into the shop and asked to be served. The man then exited the shop after not getting any assistance but returned this time with a man who was armed with a shot of firearm. It is said that both men kicked open a zinc gate right at the side of the building and shouted police. Bartley saw them and attempted to take away himself and go back into the shop. But it is said that the man who was armed with the shotgun reportedly fired some can hitting him in the head. He fell on the ground and it is said that the man with the long thing now went over him and fired some more can in him chest leaving him lifeless. Boy, may I tell you, say, the man them deal with the scene, grimy. The man them mash up the man's head and mash up the man's chest. To me, boy, that thing they look like a one close class kit type of thing out for going with a the funeral there because that scene there never looks so bossy when the criminal elements them done with it. Now, the police was summoned and arrived to find Bartley's body on its side. The incident occurred sometime about 9.40 p.m. going into the 10 o'clock bells. Now the police also stated in that report that a second knockings and clappings took place sometime about 11 p.m. Where a man known as Fitzroy Blair but popularly known in the streets as Two Pound was on his way to his house after leaving a community bar when several loud explosions were heard. Residents later stated that they found him on a church lane and alerted the police. 
Blair, a 35-year-old mason from Ramsey Drive in Palmer's Cross, was seen laying face down in a pool of red substance that leaked from his body. He was clad in a grey long sleeve shirt, brown plaid shorts, along with a pair of black and grey socks. The police report also states that a pair of black and white slippers believed to be his was seen in close proximity to his lifeless body. Now, the police states that they are presently investigating. Now, anyone having any information surrounding the last life of them two men, please link up the squad of them and give them the necessary information. And as always, if you not trust the squad of them, link up on the Spot News Media or any like-minded blogger. Give us the information and we will definitely pass it on to the relevant authorities who can make effective change. Remember, in a Clarinda, you know, can't allow that place there to get back out of hand, you know. On a need for remember in recent times how Clarendon was. And if you don't nip this in the bud, it will go right back there. So remember, you know, a mobia used to run second behind Clarendon where knockings and clappings and lots of life thing concern. So on a need for take heed before them dirty criminal elements yeah, hat up back on a place. But anyway, <laughs> make we continue. Now over there in the parish of Manchester, we have seen an uptick in crime and violence over the past two years in Manchester. And it seems as if at only when time things get seriously out of hand, the authorities really start take things really serious. It look like people literally have to lose them three pints before things are put in place. And even though certain things is said to have been put in place, are they really set in place in terms of how they make it look like it is in place? No, the police in Manchester is stating that Recent knockings and clappings that resulted in the loss of life of some people, including some reprisal knockings and clappings, are among the factors why a curfew has been set in some of Manchester's central communities. So a curfew was set in place in some of Manchester's central communities since January 20 that a Friday were gone, started at 6 p.m. and concluded this morning, January 23, at 8 a.m. Now, a senior police source stated that last week Saturday's loss of life of the 42-year-old bartender Nakisha Harrison, otherwise known as Bumper, who lost her life by criminal elements at a house in land settlement that is near the Royal Flat community. is being theorized by the police as a reprisal knockings and clappings. Now, Bumper reportedly was not the intended target of that attack, the police source stated. Now, however, the police source also stated that the December 6, knockings and clappings of a man known as Marlon Irwin, otherwise called Mota, is being linked to her knockings and clappings. The police source stated that it was a reprisal in terms of the loss of life of Marlon Irwin, otherwise known as Mota. So the curfew is actually in place in Comfort, that is our community, land settlement and broadleaf communities. Now the question that on the spot news media is asking the police, not just in Manchester, but overall the Jamaica Constabulary Force, when they say that a curfew is set in place, do they just mean that by word of mouth or there's actual resources set in place in these communities to really have a curfew as they state it? Because I know for sure that the curfew that was imposed in these Manchester communities is just on black and white because there was no reflection of additional personnel being placed on the ground to make sure that the curfew was carried out in terms of how a curfew order is supposed to be carried out. So I do implore on members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, if you do not have the necessary resources, stop making it seem as if it is being done. Stop mislead members of John Public. 
just see what you can do, put the additional resources that you can. Because we know so on a short staff, you know. So we now got to knock on you, you know. But when time on the talk about curfew, impose, people feel say barricades and woolly for police and soldiers' presence are going in at the place and some raids are going to go on and some dig down and all these things. But that now happen. Sometimes when I just drop off on one barricade somewhere. And probably one or two soldiers might be there if you do some like a vehicle at checkpoint. And some barricades are not even being manned. And you will have one one patrol We go through the areas and shout on a loudspeakers and tell the people themselves to come off of the road. But that is just about it. There is literally nothing set in place. So stop mislead, members of Chan Public. Please. Yeah, man. So watch this now, my peeps. Now over there in the second most murderous parish, the parish that I have dubbed as such, which is the West Molana Police Division. On Saturday night, a place where them call Farm Pen, a knockings and clappings go on where involve a half-duty squaddy and a criminal element in a bar. So the deceased man has since been identified as this criminal element presently on the screen, 33-year-old Mikel Davis. He's also from the Farm Pen community in West Milan. Now reports from the West Milan police is that the off-duty officer was a patron at a bar. You don't know more time the squad of them done work. So them go hold a little drink with them friend them in a bar and just go and hold a vibe. So the police report suggests that Mikel Davis entered the bar dressed in a grey hooded jacket with an object shaped like a firearm in the front pocket of the jacket. The officer stated that Davis then walked from the bar and returned shortly after, looked in the direction of the constable and again walked out of the bar. So according to the police report, the constable went in pursuit of Davis because Squadia wonder why this brother here come a pre me out so. So it would seem as if me not sure that them know each other. But it is alleged that Davis, that a Mikkel Davis, run off upon seeing Squaddy in hot pursuit of him. The constable reportedly identified himself as a police and instructed Davis to stop. However, the suspect continued to run and subsequently fell on the ground. Now, uh, the police report continues to say that it is alleged that Mikkel Davis immediately pulled the firearm and fired, hitting the off-duty officer in his upper left arm. The police report continues to say that the officer then drew his uh, firearm from his waistband and fired several shots in the direction of Mikkel Davis. So, the report stated that he got hit in his chest. His arms, his abdomen, and him get a one can in him left foot. It is said that the officer thereafter retrieved the illegal firearm, which was found to be a Glock 19 pistol with four live 9mm rounds loaded in the said firearm. The off-duty officer is said to have called police assistance and later drove himself to the Savannah Lamar General Public Hospital for treatment. His knockings and clappings, fame little thing is a little grey, so squaddy injury is not considered life-threatening. However, Mikkel Davis was transported shortly after to the said hospital by the police, where he was pronounced, you know what. So this is the second fatal knockings and clappings by the police since the start of the year in West Milan. So another job well done again by the squad of them because we don't really know what was his purpose for coming at the bar in the first place. Probably him come for dirt somebody else and see the squad. I'm not too sure for the squad. But whatever the case may be, he's no longer with us. <laughs> yeah, man. So still in the West Milan Police Division, the husband of a prominent Westmoreland lawyer has been arrested and charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition following a police operation in Little London, Westmoreland on Sunday. So charged is 36-year-old Jason Barrett of Rose District in Savannah Lamar. Now, reports from the Westmoreland Police is that sometime about 12.30 a.m. a team of officers was on mobile patrol in the Big Bridge area when Barrett was seen at the front of a shop with a bulge to the right side of his waistband. Barrett was accosted and searched and the illegal firearm taken from his waistband. 
The firearm was inspected by the police and found to be a black and silver Smith & Wesson Springfield 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 16 9mm rounds of ammunition. Barrett thereafter informed the police that he was a licensed firearm holder. The police then requested that he produce his firearm user's license. Barrett then went to his vehicle and made checks and later told the police he left the license at his home. The police later accompanied him to his home to retrieve the license. Whilst at his home, he reportedly failed to produce the firearm license and thereafter admitted to the lawmen that he was not a holder of a licensed firearm. Barrett was subsequently charged for the offense of illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. And may I remind you that he will be facing no less than the minimum of 15 years behind bars. So let us see if his wife, who is a prominent Westmoreland lawyer, can get him off this one. I just hope that the squad of them make sure them prepare them report the right way and outline everything in detail so that there is no confusion when it is presented in the court and send him away for a mighty long time because what would be the purpose of him being out there given the fact that he is not from the era that he was caught what was his purpose out there with an illegal firearm so now my peeps on a see boy boy me i tell you you know me i tell you you know this gun culture everybody want to be bad definitely a tear down jamaica because this apparently probably not a little regular kind of boy given the fact that he is the husband of a prominent Westmoreland lawyer. So what was his reason for having that illegal firearm? So on the Spot News Media, will definitely be making checks into this one and update you in subsequent newscast. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.